and knowing that God had sworn with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins according to the flesh he had raised up Christ mm -hmm. to sit on his throne, he seen this before spake of the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. Not the second coming of Christ. Yeah. Not the second coming of Christ. Amen. He, this is the word of a man filled with the Holy Spirit. David, when he thought, spoke about somebody sitting on his throne, a Messiah, mm -hmm. said he spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither did his flesh see corruption. And he went, he went back to heaven. <laughs> Is where he went. And then we got the testimony of Jesus himself. Jesus himself gives a testimony. Revelation 3.21. To him that overcometh a lie, grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I also overcame and am sitting down with my father in his throne. Well, now, if you're going to say David's throne is greater than the father's throne, so I don't know how you'd substantiate that, but now you got to do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Can't let people off the hook. Mm -hmm. If Jesus is yet to sit on David's throne, then he's got to get off the father's throne to do it. Yeah. And he's got to come down to the earth from which he delivered the people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. After he's been glorified. Yeah. Then the end, when he leaves the holy place, the intercession stops. Amen. See, this is an indefensible doctrine. I don't hear anybody exposing it mm -hmm. or read anybody exposing it. Everyone's just tight-lipped about it and don't like to talk about it. But I, We're talking about Zion here, see. And I'm telling you that there's a superior Zion and that Jesus is associated with a superior Zion, not the inferior Zion. Jerusalem, its location, the temple, everything about it is the inferior one. It's not the true one. Mm -hmm. It's a picture of the true one. That's right. Amen. So why would you leave the reality to settle in a picture? Mm -hmm. What logic is there in leaving the antitype to be identified with the type? See, it doesn't make any sense at all. Then that would mean Jesus didn't finish his work on earth. Mm -hmm. What other conclusion could you come to? <laughs> Jesus said when he died, it's finished. Yes. But if Jesus is going to come back to this earth as it is and sit on David's throne here in the earth, then he, the work wasn't finished. Mm -hmm. so he's going to subdue his enemies from, the, from Zion, Amen. not from earth. This is the Jerusalem that's from above. It's the mother, mother of us all. Galatians 4.26 says, Jerusalem, which is above, is the mother of us all. And remember, Jerusalem and Zion, those are just synonymous. Those are the same things. Now let's, let's have another testimony about, about this Jerusalem or this Zion. Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Now this takes place after the heavens and earth have passed away. This is after. Revelation 21.3 says, The heavens and the earth fled from before his face, and no place was found for them. That's the verse preceding what I'm going to read here. Mm -hmm. So the heavens and earth are gone. Yeah, there isn't any earthly Jerusalem or any other earthly city. It's gone. There's a new heavens and a new earth. Now Revelation 21.4 says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. So the old one's gone now. Am I right? It's gone now. Amen. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, there is no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, mm -hmm. coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Mm -hmm. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them. They shall be his people. God himself shall be with them and be their God. And shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Mm -hmm. None of those things, you can't slot that into a temporal environment. It won't fit at all. Revelation 21.10, He carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God having the glory of God mm -hmm. 
and her light was like unto a stone more precious even like a jasper stone clear as crystal. In other words, it's a glorified, it's the glorified church. So this is the Jerusalem that's from above. Joel prophesied salvation would be in Jerusalem. Peter fulfilled that, said that was fulfilled on the day of Pentecost. This is that which Joel prophesied, said it was fulfilled. A couple that was no messianic prophecy says that Jesus will reign in Jerusalem. No messianic prophecy or any other prophecy says that Jesus will sit on a throne in earthly Jerusalem. They're all interpretations of Scripture, not declarations of Scripture. The new earth will be the focus of the reign of God's people. They shall reign in the earth, Revelation 5.10, but it's the new earth. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. That's what they're going to reign in. Not the old, not the old earth. What point, what point would there be for, for a glorified church to reign in the earth as it is now? Exactly. First of all, I question that this is even possible. Mm -hmm. That once you're glorified, you could re-enter the temporal zone. Did the scriptures categorically say of the glorified Christ, the heavens and the earth fled from before his face? There, see, a glorified Christ and temporal, temporal things are incompatible. They can't exist. So we're being brought, technically, we're being brought where he is. And if you want to view it from the standpoint of the new heavens and the new earth, he's coming down, but that doesn't mean he's coming down like 10 miles or 1,000 miles or a trillion miles down. They're going to, he's going to join together all things in one that are in heaven and that are in earth. So the idea of the city coming down is that this is going to be, heaven and earth are going to be joined. That's the idea. All from Zion. We know this is the case because God's kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. It's an everlasting kingdom that will be given to the saints. That's Daniel 7, 27. I think I, I, I think I made the point here enough. But a, a professed church that is earth-centric mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a gospel that majors on this world and the affairs of it are contradictions to an exalted Christ. That's right. Amen. There's no way that, they, that you can merge those two together. Jesus said, you're from beneath, I'm from above. That's why he went back. He, did, he came down, but he didn't stay down. And, we're, we're, and we've been raised up, not laid down. Of course, this deals a devastating blow to soul sleeping, but that's another, another matter. So God dwells on high. That's how we have been raised up. It's, yep. it's not only to get us out of the condemned zone, but into the blessed zone. That's what it's for. I commend it to you, for, to your thinking. I hope that these things aren't strange. They don't have a strange sound. But if they do, truth holds up under examination. Yeah. You, can, you can examine truth in the most thorough way, and it will not collapse. But error always collapses under examination. Yeah. Every error can be dismantled. Mm -hmm. Some people are able to do it and some aren't. But those who are competent in kingdom understanding can dismantle error. But nobody can dismantle truth That's right. because it's forever.